a lot of people will know who you are. You've done commentary here on, on Virgin Media. We've seen you with Italy. But can we go back to 2010 mm -hmm. and, and your career? You're playing with Leinster and, and everything changed. Yes. Yeah, so I suppose I was climbing the ladder of uh, professional rugby in here in Ireland with, with, uh, with Leinster, as you were saying. And I uh, was playing for my university when sort of my life uh, turned around and changed when, unfortunately, a teammate uh, accidentally stood on my face and his stud, so a bit of metal, uh, went into my eyeball and perforated, uh, burst the eyeball, which uh, led to a few complications and ultimately left me blind uh, in my left eye. So it was, uh, yeah, pretty life-changing. Uh, <sighs> What what's the reaction to something like yeah. this? Because at that time, like you're training, you know, you're ahead of the likes of the Johnny Sexton's, <laughs> the Ian Madigan's, the Joey Carberry's. You know, you were the man in command at this time, and for something like this to put an end to that, what goes through your head? Yeah, well, it happened when I was twenty, so um, you know, it's, it's it's pretty difficult when you're young to sort of comprehend that. So I think there's you know there's emotions of anger and and why and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, luckily, my, my uh, recovery, you know, got back in order that I could could play uh, again. But as, as I said, I developed complications with cataracts and my retina uh, ultimately detached. So age 21 uh, informed Joe Schmidt, who was the, you know, Leinster coach at the time that, you know, to play rugby with sort of uh, one eye essentially at out half, which was my position, it would have been quite difficult. So the most difficult decision I had to had to make, yeah. To step back and and to go, you can't, like, I can't do this. I, I, what was that meeting like? Because is that you essentially, you were you were rehabbing to try to go back. And <clears throat> to have that meeting, is that you're, you're drawing a line under it? And mm -hmm. where are you thinking your future was immediately rugby? And mm -hmm. where, where are you thinking it's going to go now? Did you even have that foresight? Like? Yeah, uh, it was quite complicated because I think, you know, as, as Tommy would have known playing rugby, you know, if you if you hurt your leg, you might be able to do some form of different exercise or, or vice versa, you know. Um, but because my eye was so delicate, I couldn't run, I couldn't go into the gym. So it was very much, you know, for the first few months anyway of like staying still and sitting in certain positions and taking drops con constantly. So the rehab was not uh, a normal rehab. So uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose when you're 21, you don't have many other uh, plans yeah. outside of what you're doing. Um, but I always wanted to stay within the sport. Uh, you know, I've never really fell out of love with rugby is what I wanted to do as a, as a kid and sort of stayed with it and coached different teams and Leinster were really good to me you know in terms of offering me uh, or helping me coach different teams and I got a because of that I got a call to move over to uh, the glamorous Italy back in 2012 when I was 22. So the dream is still alive you thought that there's still hope for me to be out on that pitch again and this opportunity came to go to Italy mm -hmm. so where did that call come from? And did you think that it was just going to be at that sort of a lower level? You, I mean, we're seeing you here playing for Italy at the national level, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm sure you weren't dreaming about that at the time. No, I think, well, I moved over as, as a coach. So, you know, I'd fully, I had fully retired. You, you, you always, I suppose you always want the, the dream, you know, but even though uh, I, in, in my mind it was, it was done. Um, so I went to a city in Northeastern Italy called Udine, which is near the Slovenian border. And I was there just coaching kids and, and working in schools and trying to embrace the culture and the language and everything like that. But there was always the burning desire to keep playing, you know, that's something, uh, you know, you didn't fulfill your, your, uh, your maximum potential and everything like that. So um, I suppose, thankfully, my brother came to visit me in 2013 and he's a really big part of, of my story. Yeah. And I just fully opened up and had a really good brotherly cry to him just with this, all this uh, pressure on top of me going that I just want to go back and play rugby. That's your, your identity has gone. Uh, and, and he thought, you know, Ian can still kick, he can still pass, you know, he can do everything accurately. He's just got this one problem where he can't see out of his left eye, so what can we do? So we got in touch with uh, the IRB, which now they're known as World Rugby. So for people who don't know rugby, it's sort of like the, the, the FIFA, you know, it's the main mm -hmm. organization of, of rugby. And there was never really anything uh, that was developed in terms of eye protection. So uh, we ultimately maybe pushed the right buttons and annoyed the right people and eventually rugby goggles uh, became available in 2014. I picked up the first pair. And, and I really, I, I, rem I remember you so distinctly, like seeing you on the pitch and being like, Who, he's Irish, what's going on, what's going on here? But before we get to like, you worked your way into the Italian team. Mm -hmm. So 
you get your rugby goggles mm -hmm. and the next thing was it like Conor O'Shea going, go on, jump on the pitch there. You haven't played in a few years. Yeah, they wouldn't be the, the best fashion statement uh, <laughs> if you were talking about fashion earlier on, you know. I mean, you do look like a bit of a pilot from the 1940s or as if you're going on the ski slopes, you know, you'd get you'd get comments like that all the time from people. But I didn't care because it was just to protect my, my good eye. Yeah. I think a lot of people thought that the goggles enhanced vision, um, but it, it, it probably decreased it a little bit just because of padding. So you have less vision on, on some points parts and, and things like that so it was solely just to just to protect it um but yeah I, I I was coaching with my my club which was the lower end of Italian rugby so literally I'm not joking when I say guys were there with uh, McDonald's bags before games cigarettes very much before during and after so it was the lower <laughs> end you know social rugby so but I knew after playing a few games there like I knew obviously the level I wanted to to go up and luckily I got signed by um a team called Rugby Viadana there and then spent a couple of years there and then got signed by the full professional team of Bennett and uh, Treviso who yeah. compete in the same league as Ulster and Munster yeah. and all these other teams. And, and listen, I played against you on numerous mm. occasions mm. for Treviso and for mm. Ireland. And y what I couldn't understand is, Sue, so what level of vision do you have on that left eye now? Oh, well, it's, it's black. So if, so, I, yeah, if I'm so, to cover up the but right... But you're yeah. left-footed. Yeah. So you are having to kick the ball as an out-half, catch the pass... With with no vision, in this left eye. I mean, mm -hmm. the like it's incredible that you were able to play at professional mm -hmm. level and whatever about for Benetton and Treviso, but actually playing in a Six Nations match with only one eye mm -hmm. is it is just it's astonishing. Uh, yeah, well, no, I appreciate it. I suppose some other players struggle to pass, so you could say that exactly. that's their, you could say that they that's their disability almost in some way. Mine, yeah, was just a bit obviously a bit more complicated. So you had to learn how to catch properly because your depth perception, you know, um, when I was in hospital the very first time I went to pour, you know, myself a glass of water, you'd miss it by a good three foot and things like that. So you, you, you had to sort of reprogram your brain. And that was a constant battle every day to, to try and make sure that you didn't make the eye an excuse. And, and even those goggles, I mean, I was driving on the motorway today and without the windscreen wipers, to, like I wouldn't be able to it's, see a thing, but there's no windscreen wipers in those goggles. So no. if you're playing with the rain, like my, my arms were the windscreen exactly. uh, wipers. Yeah. Did you have different pairs? Like how to like yeah. trying to see and and like as an out half. I mean, you're the you're the playmaker for the team. It's probably why we played quite negatively uh, whenever <laughs> I was in a ten because yeah, you, you just call the forwards around the corner and maybe get your nine to kick <laughs> whenever weather conditions are a bit trickier. But no. It presented itself with huge challenges, but ultimately um, I could never be angry with them because that's why uh, I was able to, to play. And that gave me the confidence to uh, to go back uh, and play. But yeah, it was it was a constant battle every day, but something that you just had to embrace. And uh, yeah, you, you never gave away your secrets. <laughs> maybe maybe now that I've retired a second time, you can. You can do what you can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. A second time. That's the thing. Retiring for the second time. Yeah. You've got to do it twice. Yeah, oh. I know. Um, so... I'm just wondering for your family, mm -hmm. right? You've had this life-changing injury mm -hmm. and obviously your brother is, is, in your, is in your corner doing everything he can to get you back. Your wife, girlfriend and wife now, Cordelia, mm -hmm. is she sitting there going, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this to me? Already rugby is a dangerous enough sport. Mm -hmm. And they like, where are there people going, please don't? Yeah, I think throw my parents in at that as well, particularly my mum. I was just going to say your mum. Yeah, but I think that it was just trying to make sure that you were playing in, in as a safe environment as possible. Of course, you're in a contact sport like rugby, you're going to get bumps and bruises and, you know, you, you, you get injuries. That's just part and parcel of it. And yeah, this is a little bit more delicate, but you're just trying to make sure that those risks don't, uh, that, the, that the percentage is just a lot lower than what it could be. Yeah, some people would say you're completely bonkers, but... Listen, I played over nearly 150 games with the goggles over a six-year period and uh, with various teams, you know, from uh, one of the lowest levels to, you know, international rugby and challenging, but nothing ever damaging, nothing uh, ever happened like that. So yeah. that's probably been the one of the, the successes as well as thousands of people now registered using these goggles, which uh, they wouldn't have previously. Amazing. Like, it is. It's absolutely fantastic. And listen, I know you're back home now. You've moved mm -hmm. from Benetton Treviso to Balahi and uh, <laughs> love him. I mean, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> well, it's romantic. I mean, Seamus Heaney land, so it is fairly romantic <laughs> and poetic, you know, yeah. so you can... Absolutely. Yeah. Espressos yeah. in every corner, I'm sure. Trying to find whatever much. positive we can. <laughs> uh, but listen, 
if, and this is only you're an, a brilliant uh, motivational speaker, and you're you're brilliant in terms of talking about people to deal with resilience and come back and, and really living and fighting for a dream. And this isn't even getting into the time you're you're living in Italy, of course, during COVID and everything else. So, mm-hmm. uh, second sight, Ian McKinley, of course, with Jerry Thornley, uh, and a fabulous rugby writer. Really as well. fascinating, Cheers, fascinating. Uh, congratulations, oh, uh, super read. Appreciate it, Clark Kent. It has been a pleasure <laughs> having you here this morning. <laughs> It's unbelievable, isn't it?